Hello and welcome to the last section of chapter 7. Today we're going to look at section 7.6 which deals with linear programming. 7.6 is going to deal with the real life applications um, where businesses are typically looking at um, trying to either maximize a profit or minimize a cost um, and their ultimate goal is to do what we call optimize something or a particular quantity um, and, and optimizing is nothing more than finding a min or a max and they can do that using a method which we call linear programming. Now linear programming is a two-dimensional approach and it consists of what we call an objective function and a set of constraints. Now the set of constraints is actually our linear system of inequalities and what we'll find is based on this um, set of constraints that we have we're gonna come up with points of intersection um, where our, we have our solution region and our optimal solutions are actually going to occur at a vertex of that constraint area. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those one of those coordinate points from the vertex um, or vertices because you may have to check multiples plug them back into the objective function and that's where we're going to find where our max or our minimum value or values occur. So, um, a few guidelines before we get started. When we take the approach of linear program, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to sketch the region that corresponds to our system of constraints. This is going to give us that um, overlapping shaded region where our solutions are going to occur. Then we're going to go and we're going to find the vertex points or the vertices of that solution region. And finally, we're going to take each one of those vertices and plug them into our objective function. Now the one thing I want to caution you on this is please don't look at a coordinate point or a vertex point and say oh that's too low or that's too high. Please make sure that you test every vertice point so that you um, can make sure that you're not overlooking something um, where a max or min may actually occur. So example one tells us to find the maximum value of z equals 3x plus 2y that's subject to the following constraints. Now this right here, the z equals 3x plus 2y, this is what we call our objective function and our constraints then are going to be these equations right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by graphing the set of constraints with the inequalities and then find our vertices points. So when we do this we end up with something like, so as you can see this right here is the line of um, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 4 and all I did is I rearranged and put that in the form of y equals mx plus b. Likewise with this equation here I got x minus 1 which is the red here. Now I have to pick my test point. Um, we have x is greater than 0 which tells me that we're looking at everything in this direction. y is also greater than 0 which tells me we're looking at everything in this direction. Um, if I plug in the test point 0, 0 into this equation, 0 is less than or equal to 4, which tells me then that I'm shading in this direction. And if I plug 0, 0 into this equation here, 0 is less than or equal to 1, which then tells me that I'm looking at everything in this region here. So our overlapping region then is going to be everything that falls within this area. So this right here is going to be our solution region. So I need to go ahead and look at the vertex points or vertices and you'll see that right here we have a vertex of 2, 1. Here we have a vertex point at 0, 2. Um, right here we have one at 1, 0, and right here we have one at 0, 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to evaluate each one of those um, vertex points into my objective function here. So if I look at the point 0, 0, this is going to give me 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 equals 0. If I look at the coordinate point 1, 
0, so I'm just going to go around. I end up with 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0, which gives me 3. If I look at the coordinate point 2, 1, we end up with 3 times 2 plus 2 times 1, which gives us 6 plus 2, or 8. And then we have the point 0, 2, so we have 3 times 0 plus 2 times 2, which gives us 4. Now because we were asked to find the max value, that tells me that I get my maximum amount at the point 2, 1. So this here produces my max. If we were looking for a minimum value, our minimum value would occur at 0, 0. But in this case, it just asks for the max, so we are done. Now, one other thing I want to caution you on is sometimes you may find that you have more than one vertex that has the same solution, and that's okay too. Example 2 tells us to maximize the objective function z equals 4x plus 2y, where x and y are both going to be greater than or equal to 0, and we're given the constraints that x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 4, 3x plus y is greater than or equal to 7, and negative x plus 2y is less than or equal to 7. So when I go ahead and rearrange my equations so that I can plot them, I end up with this set of equations, and now I'm going to go ahead and graph them, and we end up with something that looks like this. Now when we do our test point, you'll notice that we end up with a shaded region that occurs, it goes, it's going to go along the blue line here, down the red line, down the green line, and everything within this region, because we're going to be greater than x, or greater than 0 on x, and y is also going to be greater than 0. So it's this region in here, which means we have vertices at 1, 4, This vertice point is going to be at 2, 1. This vertice point is at 4, 0. And that's it. Now this is what we call an unbound region. And even though we were asked to maximize this, we can't really maximize because it is unbound. That means everything in this region over here is going to be a maximum point. But we, could, we can go ahead and find a minimum point on this because we would run into a minimum point or a least amount somewhere over here. So let's just go ahead and calculate the minimum. If we look at the point 1, 4, we end up with z is equal to 4 times 1 plus 2 times 4, which gives us 8 plus 4, or 12. If we look at the coordinate point 2, 1, we end up with z equals 4 times 2 plus 2 times 1, or 8 plus 2, which is 10. And we also have the coordinate point at 4, 0. So z equals 4 times 4 plus 2 times 0, or 16. So if we were to find a minimum value, this here would be the min. But again, we're asked to actually maximize, and in this case we can't maximize it because we're unbound, or there is nothing to close this side in, therefore there is no maximum. Now, up until this point, we've been giving pretty straightforward problems. We're given an objective function. We're given a list of constraints. We can graph them, find our region, find our vertices, plug them in, and go from there. Now, in the real world or in the business field, they're not always given everything. Sometimes you actually have to figure that stuff out on your own. So example three is a story problem. Um, I am going to ask that you make sure that you understand how to do this. You will be asked to do something like this on your test. Um, so if you're struggling with this, please make sure that you see me. 
Example 3 says that a candy manufacturer wants to maximize the profit for two types of box chocolates. A box of chocolate-covered creams yields a profit of $1.50 per box, and a box of chocolate-covered nuts gives you a profit of $2 per box. Market tests and available resources have indicated the following constraints. Um, they give us that the combined production level should not exceed 1,200 boxes per month. The demand for a box of chocolate-covered nuts is no more than half the demand for the box of chocolate-covered creams. And the production level for chocolate-covered creams should be less than or equal to 600 boxes plus three times the production level for chocolate-covered nuts. So based upon all of this information, the first thing we need to do is we need to, one, identify our objective function, and two, come up with a list of constraints so that we can um, go ahead and figure out what our maximum profit is going to be. So for our objective function, it says that we want to maximize profit. So our profit is going to be found by taking a dollar fifty um, for the box of chocolate covered nuts which I'm going to call X and we're going to add that to two dollars per box of the chocolate covered nuts which we're going to call Y so the creams are X and the nuts are Y so this right here is what we are trying to optimize or find the maximum profit of. Now we have to list our constraints. Uh, our constraints start out by saying that um, the combined production level should not exceed 1,200 boxes per month. So that means that when I take, uh, we'll write this over here, x plus y that this has to be less than or equal to 1,200 boxes. Now number two tells us that the demand for a box of chocolate-covered nuts is no more than half the demand for the chocolate-covered creams. Well, we're calling chocolate-covered nuts Y, and this is no more, which means that this is less than or equal to one-half the production of chocolate-covered creams, which we're calling X. And um, number three tells us that the production level for the chocolate-covered creams, which we are calling X, is going to be less than or equal to 600 boxes plus three times the production level for chocolate-covered nuts, so we'll say plus 3Y. So these right here are our system of constraints. Now we probably should rewrite these um, so that there we have our x's and y's on one side and constants on the other. So if we do that, we end up with x plus y is less than or equal to 1,200. Then we have a negative 1 half x plus y is less than or equal to 0. And we have x minus 3y is less than or equal to 600. So, and if you want, you can clear out your fractions. Um, otherwise, you can just leave it like this. Now, I'm going to do just a rough sketch. Okay, I am going to caution you when you do this on your calculator, you are really going to have to adjust your window. Obviously, if we're talking about um, selling 1,200 boxes of candy, uh, you're probably not going to want to be in a window from negative 10 to 10 for your X and Y values. So you are going to have to play with your window a little bit to get your points of intersection. So when we go ahead and graph this, we end up with a rough sketch or something that looks similar to a region that looks like this. Now I've gone in and I've put in the points of intersection that I got off from my calculator. And now we have to go ahead, because we're trying to find the maximum profit, we're going to have to plug each one of these coordinate points into our profit equation. So I'm going to slide this down. Hopefully you have that profit equation written down somewhere. 
And when I look at the point, 0, 0, this is going to give us a profit that's equal to 0. When we look at the point 800, 400, we're going to end up with a profit equal to 1.5 times 800 plus 2 times 400, and this will give us a $2,000 profit. We have the point 1050 and 400, or I'm sorry, 150, and that's going to give us 1.5 times 1050 plus 2 times 150, or profit of 1875. And if we look at the point 600, 0, you'll see that we end up with a profit of 1.5 times 600 plus 2 times 0, which gives us a $900 profit. So, as you can see, our maximum profit is going to occur when we sell 800 units of the creams and 400 units of the chocolate covered nuts. Again, if you have questions on this, please make sure that you um, come and see me on this. So on that note though, I want you guys to have a good night and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.